choir to do that song and Nan said the consensus was wonder why we're doing an Easter song at Christmas and I chose it for a reason we come to this point in our calendar where we focus on the birth of Jesus Christ in all Christendom and we celebrate the birth of this baby but if he had not lived his life, if he had not demonstrated this beautiful energy, would we be celebrating? No. He would have just been another human having another experience on the planet. So we celebrate his life. And at Christmas we go back and look at the details of the birth, which then probably made no sense to us in retrospect, knowing what would happen, knowing how his life unfolded, we can see the great meaning of the star, the angel singing, we can see the meaning of all the things that are recorded. But it says in the scripture that Mary, his mother, experienced these things and pondered them in her heart. She had no idea 
how things were going to play out. Like every human on the path, we get the messages and we have no idea how they're going to manifest. We just tend to remember them one day when they do. Oh my goodness, I was shown that before. You see? So we have this beautiful opportunity to look in retrospect and to honor the birth of this being who did in fact bring an awareness of the Christ consciousness to the planet. The life he led brought an energy that would change the world. And we can see that it in fact did change the world. And when we look at Christmas in our world today, it is about, in our world, our total world, Christmas is about loving, sharing, it's about gifting others, and it's about seeing the value in others. We stop and we acknowledge and the, all the love and support that's in our world. Now, can we not agree that everyone does that who practices Christmas? It's a time of sharing and loving and gifting. And when you think about the life of Jesus, what did he do? But share and love and gift and honor the individual of every person and honor the life force and support that they brought to the planet. So we're really not too far off of part of the work that he did. But he took us one step further. Jesus connected us with the Father. He said, follow me, and then he left two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, every man was a child of God, and he used the words, our father, not my father, but our father, our father. We hear those words, but he knew those words. Metaphysically, we believe that when we speak of the term Christ, we are talking about a divinity that Jesus helped us see. Christ is an energy that lives within every human being. It's the spark that animates us. It's that spark of divine essence that's within us, no matter what our faith or religion. So Jesus came to remind us of this spark that was within us because he knew it within himself. And he also knew that everybody was a child of God. All of them. It doesn't matter their space, their time, what their job was. They were all children of God. This is important to me because I think that we have misunderstood for so long the message. And so as we start our Christmas celebration, I want to speak from my heart about what happened. When, when Jesus <clears throat> left, you guys realize he didn't leave a religion. He did not leave a religion. He actually said to his disciples, please don't set up a hierarchy. Please don't do that. Please just go and teach. Go and heal. Go show people of God within their hearts. Father is within. Please do that. And the disciples did. They did everything that he said to do. But what happened after he left, people started misunderstanding. And if, in fact, he left in 33 AD, we don't know. 100 AD, people are starting to wonder, what's, what, who was he? What's going on? What was his relationship with God? Who was he? Was he divine? Was he human? And the argument about Jesus' divinity and his human nature continued for the next 200 years. Was he divine? Who was this man that taught us to heal, that taught us to love? Who was he that told us God was our Father? And it was this raging debate. And all of the scholars had their own opinions about Jesus, God, and then some of them decided that Jesus had to have been God. He had to have been eternal. If he's not one with God, then nothing makes sense. And do you all understand? Yes. There was a fight going on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so in 325 AD, Constantine gathered the ministers of the day. There were 300 ministers that were gathered. 
every one of these ministers had lived their own theology. There was no centralized church. They came together, and the one question that stalemated the convention was who was Jesus in relationship to God? Was he born of God? Well, if he's born of God, then he has a beginning and an end. Therefore, he's not divine. He's not eternal. Do you see? Well, no, is he one with God? Well, if he's one with God, then he's equal power of God. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Do you see the argument? Now he's equal in power to God, and now there's one God, and Jesus Christ is that God too. Do you see the battle? It was a very, very challenging position. And someone came up with the idea, why don't we say together that Jesus is of the same substance of God? Can we just say that together and everybody, a majority said, okay, that'll satisfy. It'll satisfy those that need to know, that need to think God or Jesus was absolutely equal to God. It'll satisfy those that believe Jesus was Son of God, begotten of God. Do you see? So they, and a lot of people didn't agree, so they left. But this idea became the Nicene Creed. And this idea says, and I'll quote it. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of the Father, the only begotten, that is, the essence of the Father, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. <laughs> Do you hear what it did, though? It, it covered all the bases, but what it did was it said, Now, Jesus is of one substance with the Father, God of God, light of light, and therefore, is he human? And what did it do? Separated us. It separated the idea of a being coming to show us who we are. It separated us. It made this Jesus Christ now one with the Father, and then they created a trinity to satisfy the other disputes that were going on. So the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit equal in power. And now where are you? You are now not able to touch. And that is the antithesis of his message. That's the antithesis of his message. Jesus Christ came into the body and lived as a Christed being, knowing one is with God while human. While human. What is our job? To come into the body to know our Christ in nature. Remember the definition of Christ. It's the spark of divinity within every human being. I don't care what you call it. To know that nature and to live it while in the human body. I was thinking the other day, um, you know, as metaphysicians, we, we love all the miracles. We love reading about people who perform great feats. But to walk on water, to ascend, to take your body and ascend, that sounds pretty difficult. <laughs> How does it sound walking, loving every man on earth? Pretty difficult. Pretty difficult. And again, in our mind, we put these feet up here. But the feet is here. It's in our heart every day. It's a walking, loving man. All right. Jesus' message. Everything I do, you can do, and greater. And you know, I don't take exception to the idea that we are of the same substance of God. Because if Jesus is of the same substance of God, we're of the same substance of God. 
So the premise of that comment doesn't bother me. It's the interpretation that bothers me. It's how over the last thousand years or greater, we have isolated. His message, everything I do, you shall do in greater. How would we have heard the message if he hadn't come to demonstrate it? How would we have heard that? I want everyone now to look at your own hands. And just look at them. Flesh and blood and divine. Can you feel that? Can you know that? Flesh and blood and yet divine. Thank you. All right, you don't have to look any longer. <laughs> I uh, had a client come in the other day, and I read for her about once a year. She's not a member of the church. You all don't know her. And um, she had sent her daughter to have a reading with me. And her daughter went home and said to her mom, Mom, did you see the purple light coming out of Cindy's hands when she read? And her mom said, I hadn't. She said, well, I did, and it's there. And I looked at the woman, and I said, it doesn't surprise me. You know, I read with my eyes closed. But it doesn't surprise me that when I'm in that space, a purple light would come from my hand. <coughs> Many years ago, maybe eight, um, Patrick and I were in Salt Lake City. And one of our members was involved, we were visiting some friends in Salt Lake City. One of our members was involved in a car accident. And it surprised her, it happened so quickly. She didn't see it coming, you know, how startled you can be. So when the impact occurred, she was disoriented and scared to death. She didn't know what happened. And she said immediately, Patrick appeared by her side. Not an image of Patrick, Patrick. And she looked in his eyes, and she knew she was going to be okay. And I don't remember if he reached out and touched her. I don't remember if he said anything to her. But she was so grateful that he showed up for her. And when I heard the story, I went, yeah, he probably did. I have no doubt that he did that. No doubt at all. How often do we negate the divinity that flows through our hands, our lives, our minds, our spirits? This Christendom, this energy of Christing, this is what... Christing is about, it's becoming the energy that Jesus Christ showed us we could be. It's honoring the divinity that is within us. How much do you negate your spiritual impact? I know when we, when I started metaphysics, um, you know, metaphysicians are really careful about how they deal with Christmas, um, if you'll notice, we do change some of the words of the songs. But you know what? I feel really good about that because those songs were written so long ago and most of them were changed words on other music pieces by my forefathers <laughs> who love to change words. <laughs> but we change them to reflect what we believe. As metaphysicians, it's very important that we stay in the metaphysical thought as we go through this beautiful celebration. And when I began in metaphysics, people were very careful. Some of them called Jesus our elder brother. You know, we don't want to use the Savior saving me as that part of God that I cannot be a part of, saving me from myself. Because we don't believe that. We believe he brought a love and light that woke us up. And that saves us, but it's, it's a different belief. So people would use the term, um, he's a, my master teacher, he's my elder brother, he's the way shower. And the term that I always felt best with, Jesus was the demonstration of the Christ. And I am a part of that Christ. And now I have a place in that divinity. And everyone has a place in that divinity. As I was um, preparing for some of the last uh, classes for my seminary students on the Old Testament, 
I actually ran into some ancient um, philosophers who actually believe what we believe. They believed in, this was in 200 AD, they believed that the ultimate salvation is not some people celebrating with God and some people celebrating, or some people suffering in, in hell. It was the ultimate return of all spirits to the Creator. This person believed that everyone is inherently good, that we had free will and we forgot, and we started to misuse it and miscreate a little bit, and then we started moving away from what we knew about our Creator, our God, and that it takes more than one lifetime to learn, and that God would continually send us lessons to experience and grow. How cool is this? How cool is this? We are not unique. We are not brand new. We are simply walking a path that helps us be the light that we feel in our heart. And anyone can get into any negotiation or discussion about the qualities of Jesus. And it will always take you one place. Love. Love and God. You can discuss theologies of religions and have fun for days. <laughs> but when you look at the qualities of what he brought, he brought a blessing to the individual. He did not set up a religion. He brought a path for us to remember God. And he honored the light within himself and within everybody. All right. Heavy? Look at your hands. I want you to take a moment to feel the love that flows through those hands. To feel the creative power that can move through those hands. The love of God that expresses. And take one hand and put it on your heart. And feel the love for you. I am loved. Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go within. <coughs> God, our Father, our Mother, I ask that your light just enfold us this day. And I invite each one of you just to feel a beautiful column of God's love surrounding you. And feel that love, the purest love of God for you. And realize your heart. As you feel God, you are quickened in that love as you follow the feeling of God you are taken where you need to be take a breath and Father, Mother, God, I ask that within each person here that that Christ of divinity, that spark of divinity that is within them begin to light and I ask that they begin to feel that heart becoming a star. Feel your divinity. I am child of God. Imagine a beautiful golden light at the heart center or whatever color it happens to be. And feel the purity in that light. And now imagine that you can stand in the center of your world with all of the complexities and take a breath and send that pure light through all those details. There's not a decision you need to make. Just feel. Just feel your light going through all the details.
And as you do, feel the beautiful love of God getting stronger. Feel that connection with the divine pouring through the crown chakra. The more you give, the more you receive. Feel your world, fill it with light. And now just imagine the presence of Jesus Christ coming forward. And send your love to him. And feel the love coming back to you. Heaven on earth, spirit divine, expressing through matter. <coughs> Feel the connection. And there's nothing you have to do. Just feel. And just allow yourself to lift up now, lifting up into a beautiful light above your head. And you'll feel the essence of Father, Mother, God. The I am. The I am all you will ever need. The fulfillment of every human experience. And feel the peace. And it is your choice to bring this peace into your world. All is available to you. Breathe it in. And if you're willing, bring that beautiful peace back down into the chair. And we do thank you, Jesus Christ, for coming and demonstrating so we could see, so we could remember. And we celebrate that demonstration this Christmas. And so it is. Take a breath. Again, send your love into the room. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. So, I shall give you homework. How would you feel if two or three times this week Spirit reminded you of your own hands? How would you feel if Spirit tapped you on the shoulder and said, notice what you're doing, notice the energy you're sharing? Would that be good? And then you could alter perhaps and send more love or acknowledge perhaps that you are sending love. I am the Christ, the beloved child of a living God. And you can repeat that if you choose. I am the Christ, the beloved child of a living God. How's it feel? Merry Christmas.